Welcome back! We are exploring the town of Serenia in the land of Serenia. And so far there is an odd absence of um, any protectors or dream chambers or uh, underwater harvesters or floating rocks or trapped Ishas. Anyway, seems the townspeople have all gotten stuck. Really good uh, pathfinding there, Sierra. There's a couple of shops lining the street. A prosperous looking tailor shop occupies the town's main corner. I look at the sign and see it says tailor. There is a possibility that I might uh, be interested in checking that out. Uh, one thing actually about the the uh, cursors in this game, it's sometimes very difficult to tell where their hotspot is, because the hotspot of the hand cursor is actually sort of in the middle of the hand uh, cursor. Fortunately, that situation improved with the um, later VGA point-and-click games. I guess this game has some growing pains, because it was the first one. May I help you, sir? And this is the tailor shop. Look like they're busy. The busy tailor shop bustles with activity as Graham looks around with interest at all the tailor's wares. Bustles with activity. There's just one customer. An employee of the tailor, a friendly, good-looking young man, caters hopelessly to a disagreeable customer in the one dressing room. The busy tailor shop bustles with a the tailor, an aristocratic-looking man, attends solicitously to Graham as he looks at all the wares in the tailor shop. Let's see if he can uh, do some for us. I Maybe don't like us... this at all. Maybe get us a nice new suit or something. I'm interested in buying something here. Ah, let me show you some things. A fine piece of cloth. With this material, I could make you beautiful shirts. There isn't a more beautiful piece of fabric to be found anywhere. With this, I could make you the finest trousers you've ever had. Well, what do you think? Well, right now I'm just looking. Thanks anyway. Sure, sure. Whatever you say, I'm just here to help. Okay, I guess we don't need anything. The young man is too busy with another customer to be bothered by Graham. There is a... Uh... You expect me to wear this? Man, that guy's an asshole. At the back of the shop, Graham notices a dressing room in which a rude, finicky customer tries on many items of fine clothing. There's also an interesting looking cloak hanging here. In the corner of the shop, Draped casually over a tailor's form, Graham sees a thick, fur-lined cloak. Well, if, as uh, Cedric indicated, we have to go into uh, the mountains to get to Mordak, a warm cloak would not uh, be a bad thing to have. Here, let me help you with that. Oh, that cloak fits you perfectly! It just looks wonderful on you. Let me tell you, it will certainly keep you toasty warm during the coming winter. Let me know if you wish to buy it. Well, I might want to buy it, but unfortunately, apparently all our money was in the castle, and therefore stolen by Mordak. Speaking of Mordak, I really am curious why he wanted to steal our castle. I mean, who does that? Must have had a good reason for it. Unless he's just in the habit of stealing castles. Maybe he's a collector. Why? These trousers don't even fit! Well, without money to buy anything here, I guess there's no choice but to leave. I guess there's sort of a hitch in the. Cedric's idea to pick up supplies here, considering we're broke. Oh, the, the guy from the cart is gone. And there's something on the floor there. A blinking pixel. Graham notices a shiny silver coin lying forgotten on the street near the broken wagon. 
A silver coin! A shiny one at that. Bending down, Graham quickly retrieves the silver coin from the street. We're rich! We're rich! Okay, maybe not. It is but a common silver coin. We also have a fish. Phew! This smelly old fish is disgusting. Yes, well, maybe if we find Sharpay, we can give her the fish. Maybe we can buy the cloak using the silver coin, although somehow I think it won't quite be enough. May I help you, sir? Yes, I have money, you see. I would like to buy that fine cloak hanging in the corner. Will you take a silver coin for it? A silver coin? You must be joking. That beautiful cloak is worth much more than that. Oh well, didn't really think so. Let's check out some of the other shops. Maybe they have something uh, that they will sell for a silver coin. Or maybe we can find a slot machine and a magnetic thingamajig to uh, cheat with it, and then turn this silver coin into many coins. Okay, unlikely. A small toy shop fronts the town's cobblestone street. A small toy... I want to look at the sign. See, it says toys. How uh, obvious. Let's go inside. Although I don't really see why we'd need any toys on this adventure. Come on in, look around. Let me know if you're interested in anything. The shipment of carving wood hasn't come in yet. What should we do? If it's not in by tomorrow, I'll send you to the sawmill. Okay, Papa? Grandpapa? Yeah, my darling? Can I keep this doll? I really like her. Now, Katrina, you know these toys are for sale for other kinder. Besides, you've got plenty of dolls. You can play with her, but just be careful. All right, Grandpapa. I'll take care of her. I have the sneaking suspicion that the toy maker is German. Just a suspicion, though. A child's wonderland of toys fills this quaint little toy shop. It's quite a nice toy shop. A child's wonderland. A pretty little girl, who must be the toy maker's granddaughter, plays with a doll while grandfather looks on. The plump old toy maker, who seems a jolly sort, carefully mends a toy while sitting comfortably behind the counter. There's also an interesting looking sled here. Graham notices a strong little sled hanging on a side wall. Let's talk to the toy maker. This is a fine little toy shop you have here. You must be very proud. Danke, son. I've worked very hard at it over the years. But you know, you need to really love it. And I do. Are most of these toys your creations? Yeah, most of them. But not all. Some my son made. Some I bought. Some I traded for. You're very talented. Danke, danke. Well... Let me know if I can help you. We will do that. There's a goldfish. A pet goldfish swims endlessly around in its fishbowl. Yep, round and round. Here goes lap number 7,432,912,814. That's what the life of a goldfish must be like, I think. Anyway, let's see about that sled. That's a fine sled, isn't it? Any child would love to have it. Yes, I was just admiring the workmanship. Danke. If you'd like to buy it, let me know. It's another thing that might be useful since we're going into the mountains. But again, I doubt a silver coin will be sufficient. Can I buy the sled with a silver coin? Nine. I'm sorry. I I I'd love to sell it to you, but I'm afraid I need a bit more than that. Pity. But what can we do? We'll have to get more money. Or find something to trade, 
since he did make a point of uh, pointing out that he also trades toys. Let's see, one more door. Nearly hidden at the end of the street sits a small shoe shop. Gary's Shoes and Accessories, I'm sure. No, just shoe shop. Take a look around if you want, but we don't have any shoes to sell you right now. We sold our last finished pair yesterday. Our business ain't doing so good anymore, and we're getting too old to keep trying. Is there anything I can do to help? There ain't nothing you can do, short of buying us out. But like I said, if you want to look around, Feel free. Okay, thanks. Why do I get the feeling we're going to be helping these people? Because that's what we do in these games, isn't it? Help people. The shoemaker's wife, looking haggard and worn, tiredly stitches away at a large piece of shoe leather. Business doesn't seem to be so good for the shoemaker and his wife. There isn't even one pair of shoes for sale and the old couple look tired and worn out. Poor people. The old shoemaker, eyes squinted and fingers calloused from years of making shoes, drives tiny nails into a shoe sole with a small cobbler's hammer. Business doesn't seem... I wanted to look at the painting! Business does... There's also... nothing about the cover. Business doesn't seem to be so good for the shoemaker. No. There's a dog on the floor. A skinny old dog lies down on the hard floor of the shoe shop. Can we pet the dog? Maybe get some fur to use in the spell? This old dog doesn't appeal to Graham. Really? Why not? What's wrong with it? You don't have any shoes for sale, huh? That's right. No shoes at all. We're making a pair right now. But it'll take a while. We're not as fast as we used to be. Well, that's okay. My own boots should carry me through the rest of my journey. Sorry, son. We're doing the best we can. Well, she said we uh, could help them by buying them out. Can we buy you out with a silver coin? The weary old woman has no interest in it. I guess not. Well, that's it for the town, I guess. At least until we can find some money, or something. We'll see what else we can do here in the next video.